Hello everyone, please confirm if I'm audible to you. A very good evening to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, good evening, Nanashree. What about others? Am I audible to you all? Loud and clear? Okay, great. So today's class is about unit 5, which is developmental biology. Both plants and animals. We are going to discuss many questions from here. We'll try to target uh, the more tougher topics because to be honest, DB is not so easy. You really require a lot of uh, in-depth concepts and uh, a lot of knowledge-based information you will require to solve the questions. Do you agree with me? Yes? What exactly you need in Unit 5 of CSI and NET to crack this particular unit questions? You need some information-based knowledge, not just a superficial knowledge and not just the regular and usual contents or topics which are normally known to everyone, like the basics of development or amphibian development, like that. But there are many more detailed concepts and some untouched concepts, which I'm, which I'm pretty sure many students out here won't even touch those concepts. But unfortunately, now these days, maximum questions are based on those concepts. Right? So we'll try to cover the more tougher concepts over here. So let's begin your first question on the screen about sex determination. Yes, a small topic under subunit C of the syllabus in Drosophila menologaster. Also in mammals, you can uh, you have to study about it. But this question is based on Drosophila. Few sentences are given to you. Now your question is you have to select the option with combination of all correct answers. A, B, E, A, B, D, B, C, E, or B, C, D. Come on, read the questions, read the statements carefully. You can also apply elimination concept of answering a question. Today, we will do a little bit different. I will not tell you the answer directly. I'll first give you the concept. Okay? And then we will see... Uh, we'll try to solve it once again and we will see if you are able to solve it or not which i'm pretty sure many of you after explanation you will be able to solve but ju let's just try to make it a little bit fun okay and since you can see each other's chat that's why i will not uh, tell the correct answer you can just reply to me after that i will uh, i'll just show the correct answer once i've given the explanation Come on, sex determination. No one? Okay. Then let me first give the concept to you about sex determination. Right? So, normally what we know in mammals, how is the sex determination done? We know that the Y chromosome has a very important role in mammals. That is the determining factor. The sex determining factor. That is why if you have a genotype XO without any Y chromosome, they will be females with ovaries, uterus, oviducts. But in flies, it is very different story. The Y chromosome is not involved in determining sex at all. How is sex determined in Drosophila? By a ratio. Interesting, isn't it? By a balance of female determinants and male determinants. Where are female determinants present? On the X chromosome. Remember this, okay? Female determinants present on X chromosome and on autosomes are the male determinants. Now, what is the ratio? If the female ratio is more than the male, then it will give rise to a metafemale. 1.33, 1.50. But even if their ratio is equal, equal, equal number of X and A, doesn't matter if there are 4 or 3 or 2. 
Till the time the ratio is one, it will lead to a formation of a normal female. When there is a 0.6, where autosome is slightly more, but not double the amount. Because over here you see autosome is double the amount of female chromosome. That is X chromosome. Which leads to the ratio of 0 0.50. In that case, it will lead to the formation of a normal male. But if it is somewhere in between, then it leads to the formation of intersex, 0.66. And if the ratio falls even below 0.5, then it results in the formation of metamale. That's why flies have either one or two X chromosomes and two sets of autosomes. If there is one, but one X chromosome in a diploid cell, as in the case of, uh, let's say the 1X and 2A, the fly will be male. But if there are two X chromosomes in a diploid cell along with two autosomes, as in this case, then the fly results in the female. Now that was about the ratio. Now what if the ratio is 1? I told you it will form female. How exactly? They will activate a cascade. If the ratio, X ratio is equal to 1, a regulatory cascade leads to the female sexual development. And in females, the presence of this SXL gene that, that is produced, the gene product, it prevents the translation of the MSL. So as a result, you can see if there is a female pathway, then there is no dosage compensation because this SXL is preventing the translation of MSL message and assembly also. But that is not stopped in case of males where the ratio is 0 0.5. As a result, there will be dosage compensation where in case of males. Okay. And SXL, if it is there, I told you it will direct itself towards a female specific differentiation. So then there are some splicing mechanisms for TRA, TRA2 and double sex. Double sex is actually a gene product. It's a gene which can form two type of products by alternative splicing. The default one will be male. But if it is splits in a different way, it will lead to a female. But that's not required for a question. That was enough for answering this question. Try to answer now. What do you think will be the correct answer? Okay. I have received some of the answers. Yes, that's right. Mahima, correct? Intersex 0 0.66 you have given correctly. Come on, now you should be able to answer quickly. I have already given you the hints and the explanation also. Yes, yes. Good, good. So since you can see each other's chat, I'm not going to take names today like I did for unit one. Uh, so today, let's see who can tell, give the correct answer. Then I'll tell you. Okay, so most of you are doing it correctly. But I am not sure why you are leaving out this option. Think about it. Why are you leaving out this option? Sex determination is achieved by a balance of female determinant on X chromosome. And male determinant on autosome, no? So isn't A correct? Yes, A is correct. Okay, so if A is correct, then either this can be the option or this can be the answer. Right? Then we just studied that the drosophila with ratio of 0.66, it will develop into intersex. So this is also correct. Now you, all you have to find between D and E. Because anyway, C is not there in any of these two options. Anyway, C is wrong. I told you that in insects, drosophila, the Y chromosome is not involved in sex determination process. So exodrosophila will develop as normal, fertile, no, not male, right? And yes, not uh, fertile, sterile male, isn't it? Sorry, not a male. Uh, the instead of fertile, it will be sterile male. That's why this is not correct. And E over here is also wrong because what did I tell you? Sex specific ex expression of SXL causes selective activation of dosage compensation. Just now I told you. In female drosophila, no. I just told you the, the sex specific 
dosage compensation will happen only in male drosophila so e is also not correct this is correct high value of xa means if the ratio is more than 1 or 1 it facilitates activation of feminizing switch the sex lethal goes to the female pathway no that's why yes that's right nupur very good it is not one because dosage compensation is in male and not in female right so nupur nandini somya ankita nida vishal aditi riya uh, and mahima had given the earliest correct answer i i could see that after explaining many of you were able to give me the correct answer okay so all I want to tell you is the concepts are not difficult. You just need a proper channel to understand properly. Right? Because um, not everywhere you will find a good explanation. Not everywhere you can find a relevant one which you can relate to. Which you can understand in simple languages. So was this simple for you to understand all of you? So, uh, to some extent you got an idea right? Since we are going in a revision class. I have to be a little bit uh, faster. I cannot go into detail of each concept. I so wish I could do so. And uh, that's why I would love to see you in my regular classes. So that I can, uh, I can make you all experts of, um, experts of developmental biology. Because trust me, there it's a very, very favorite subject in CSIR. Okay. Which ironically I skipped when I, I appeared for my CSIR. Okay. But now I am in love with this subject. So, so will you and the research options are also very good for this subject. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Very good. Wing development. Wing development in chicks. Yes. Organogenesis. The previous question was, was from a recent one, November 2020. And this question was from June 2019. Apical ectodermal ridge is removed during the wing development. The limb development will cease. Cease means stop. On the other hand, the mesenchyme. So, two Two topics, two terms are given over here. AER and mesenchyme. AER is present in the limb bud. Limb means from the, the thing which will come out from the body, right? It will protrude and it will become a limb. So at the point where it is coming out, there, there is a thickened tissue. And that thickened tissue is called as AER. And just below the AER, you have some tissues. Those tissues are called as mesenchyme. So on the other hand, if you place leg mesenchyme directly beneath the wing AER, wing means forearm, leg means hind limb, right? Forelimb and hind limb. Then what happens? Distal hind limb structures develop at the end of the wing. That means the structure, the limb will start out as a forelimb, but the distal parts of it form a end of the wing and if limb mesenchyme is replaced by non-limb mesenchyme instead of taking limb mesenchyme you have taken some other mesenchyme tissues then also AER regresses regresses means it will come back it will not protrude away or it will not extend from the body so this may demonstrate this was an experiment which was done now this may demonstrate which out of this you have to choose the combination of statements which is demonstrated by this experiment these type of questions are very important, means uh, very careful you have to be in development biology. You should not always go for known facts. You should conclude based on the experiment which they have uh, which, which they have given. Because not always they will be same. So these are your options. Tell me, which one will be correct? Okay, Saiba, Ankita, Vishal, I see many of you are giving me answers, good, good. Okay, Kaveri, Yef, Yashveen, okay, all right, so let me just show you the experiment, yes, Aditi, that's right, there was a four limb mesoderm and this was the AER, now when you removed the AER, as you can see the limb development ceases, 
in this particular question they have given the same experiment which was conducted and as it is in the book yes okay nanashri aditi mahima sangeeta soumya anup nida i have received many correct answers and yes most of your right yes the answer key is 2 very good very good everyone okay so when you have put extra ar then you can see the extension towards the distal part distal means the part which is going out from the body the part which is away from the body you can see that part is duplicated if you put extra ar on the other hand instead of four limb mesoderm if you put leg mesoderm means hind limb mesoderm if you put then you can see that the structure the limb starts out as a wing but at the end of it distal part you will have leg formation non limb mesoderm if you put you are not putting limb mesoderm only non uh, non limb mesenchyme no limb formation what all this suggests that mesenchyme is very much important to decide whether limb will come out or not and if at all see here you had changed the mesenchyme so leg came out which means what it is the deciding factor whether fore limb will come out or hind limb will come out but what is ar doing if you put extra ar it's just that the part got duplicated means it is responsible for only the extension of the limb isn't it so let's go back to the statements the limb mesenchyme cells induce and sustain ar if you did not know this the limb mesenchyme only induces the formation of ar and ar maintains the mesenchyme in the proliferative form so that it can keep on extending because you see ar you have replaced with fgf bead then also the wing is extending like a normal wing why so because ultimately ar what does it do it gives off fgf signaling right so that's why the statement a was correct mesenchyme cells specify the type yes definitely but ar doesn't specify the type c is wrong ar is responsible for only the outgrowth and the development and extension of the wing and ar does not specify the type because anyways they have given same things okay over here that's why neither c and e can be correct if e cannot be correct um sorry sorry this is a opposing statements so opposite statements means any one of them will be correct so c is not correct means over here d will be correct yes ar doesn't have any job in extending the wing so the correct answer over here is a b d and e okay i suppose you don't have to i don't have to give the explanation ar keeps the mesenchyme cells directly beneath it in a state of mitotic proliferation and prevents them from forming cartilage yes very good um yes sangeeta nida nandini debanjan renuka mahima and others also whose names i took correct so i just want you to remember that miracles will start to happen when you give as much energy to your dreams as you do to your fears don't be scared of this exam many people are still clearing it yes uh, if you see the entire fraction it is less but still many people are clearing it right what you have to do is as i said you just need the proper channel so that in very less amount of time the most important concepts you will know very clearly the concepts will be crystal clear so that you can solve the questions easily with that confidence let's begin let's continue our third question this is vulva development in c elegans vulva is the is a opening to the body of c elegans which is a nematode where the anchor cell produces lin3 protein which interacts with the let 23 protein present on the vpcs so few mutants and the phenotypes are given you have to match the following with the observed phenotype what type of mutation and what will be the phenotype observed for the cells of vulval precursor cells answer please
okay again i am getting a few correct answers let's see okay ankita good uh, good choice skipping this one fair enough am i audible are you all able to hear me okay 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 fine students all right so let me explain the concept over here for people who are saying they will prefer to skip let's check okay once now see here this is the vulva development in c elegance once i explain you can just try answering once more where you have this uh, entire worm structure and this part is the gonadal form these are this what is the gonad form gonad part okay now here you have a few cells which are vpcs vulval precursor cells that means they are the cells which will form the vulva okay a very important cell in this signaling is the anchor cell anchor cell gives signal to the vulval precursor cells and this part is zoomed over here you can see this is the anchor cell and these are the six vulval precursor cell out of which all have the capacity to form vulva but all doesn't form vulva okay now anchor cell gives the signal to the nearest cell to it which is p6p the cells vpcs are vp uh, p3 p2 p8 p this is called as equivalence vulval equivalence group or precursor cells because they have equivalent potential to make the vulval part by the way this is a vulva entire structure it consists of only 22 total cells it's an opening to the outer outer uh, side from the body now p6p you can see the anchor cell is giving signal right now signal is diffusible it will first go to the nearest cell which is p6p most concentration you can see around p6p and then the nearby cells you can see the concentration is little bit less towards p7p and p5p concentration is less so first signal p6p will receive and immediately it will specify itself into a primary cell so primary cell these are the cell lineages total eight cells will be produced primary cell total eight cells it's a small organism no that's why now immediately what p6p will do you can see here it activates lin12 now remember lin12 is inhibitory signal okay it is an inhibitory signal what will it inhibit it will inhibit p7p and p5p the nearby ones not to form primary the inhibition is that okay i am forming primary you don't form primary absolutely very good vanshika that's a delta not signaling very good this is a rtk receptor tyrosine kinase type of signaling the signal name is lin3 so all that was given no mutation that signal name is lin3 and these vulval precursor cells they will have a receptor also to receive lin3 that receptor name is let 23 okay this is a epidermal growth factor type signal and this is a rtk type receptor and this inhibitory signal is delta not signaling they will tell not to form secondary and not to form primary now if it doesn't form primary means what those fates will automatically go towards secondary and secondary cells you see they are different ones they are seven cells so 8 plus 7 plus 7 total 22 cells vulva is formed it's a very important one what happens to the other vulval precursor cells if the three are already present then they are no use they will end up forming tertiary fate which is hypodermis okay but then if these are not present by some uh, reason they are killed uh, killed off then they will take off the vulva formation okay so now can you try answering which means our very important factor over here is lin3 if lin3 is present then it is giving primary signal isn't it now one of the mutation said loss of 
lin3 another mutation said over expression of lin3 another said lin3 is not there loss of function of lin3 but receptor gain of function means what signal is supposed to activate receptor then only signal will be there right signaling inside the cell if signal is activating the receptor but what it is doing here without the signal only the receptor is getting activated so what will happen no need of the signal even without the signal see loss of function of lin3 and gain of function of let 23 even without the signal you can just try to answer now now you try to answer so most of you uh, have given me answer but most of your answers were actually wrong but i am giving you a uh, an option to correct it so think about it students all of you are saying 2 but if it is 2 just look over here if you are saying 2 then b has to be 3 isn't it if you are saying 2 then b has to be 3 if b is 3 means what just check does this make sense to you loss of function of lin3 and gain of function of let 23 that means in in the valval precursor cells they will adopt primary fate but why the others will take tertiary fate if already let 23 is activated in them then why will they take tertiary fate isn't it so uh, yes ankita mandal i think you only said you will skip this question now you are one of the students who answered correctly very good and initially i received the first correct answer from yashveen very good nida parveen second one to answer jakka venkatesh third correct answer ankita fourth correct answer nandini fifth correct answer very good so see what explanation power uh, means uh, what is the power of explanation isn't it you just as i said you just need the right channel so difficult concepts can be clear to you in just no time okay you don't have to bury yourself in books or refer to multiple channels just to find out where you can get a more simplified information where you can get a more simplified uh, explanation right but and this is just a webinar imagine if you start attending regular classes then what what level of preparation you will have for csir isn't it yes students very good correct answer is option 1 mahima debanjan aditi anit correct so loss of function of lin3 and gain of function of let 23 everything will form trying to form valva okay multi valva will develop b2 multi valva over expression of lin3 means what yes the signal is little bit more so if signal is little bit more even these will form primary signal that means the first three will form primary signal and the others will take the secondary fate okay so over expression means p6p adopt primary fate and uh, rest of the vpc will adopt tertiary fate secondary fate won't be there because over expression of lin3 that's why the signal is reaching p6p also p5p also p7p also equally loss of function only one choice no primary no secondary all vpcs adopt tertiary and reduced function means what yes p5p p6p they will adopt primary fate but p4p and p8p they will take the secondary fate because it is reduced no that's why the proper connection could not be made clear everyone easy easy peasy super easy after explanation became easy isn't it so these are the details i will not go into now as of today okay uh, if you are part of regular classes probably then we can discuss that later okay little bit for plants enough of uh, zoology little bit of botany students a chance for you to answer 
extensive molecular genetic studies on mir156 mir172 spl genes and ap2 like genes they have yielded the following functional model of these keys juvenile to adult to reproductive transition that is flowering reproductive transition means flowering in arabidopsis so this is your flow chart which they have given right now based on this results following schematic diagram has been proposed to predict the expression kinetic of the genetic factors they have given a b c d so you have to tell out of these four molecules out of these four genes what is a b c and d which of the following combination is most likely to be correct so give me the correct answer come on that's right mahima correct yes absolutely not only over expression means not only p3p uh, sorry p6p but p5p and p7p will also do that okay so that valva question was from december 2017 and this question is from june so you just required one simple concept over here that will solve your question because the flow chart is already given to you i hope you know this sign this means inhibition and this means activation in such uh, genetic expression flow charts okay so little bit of background for this molecules mir156 and all this okay so these are the age pathways it is mainly dictated by the mi rnas in plants that is age pathway whether from reproductive to juvenile uh, juvenile to reproductive it will go that is transition to flowering it depends on these molecules now they act as yes very good uh, alia bb vri your answer is right very good so two key that is mi rna mi r156 and mi r172 they act as major orchestrators in the age pathway so these two mirnas down regulate their own set of target genes in many plant species and they have opposite but related effects over the control of flowering so when it will enter from vegetative to reproductive transition initially mir156 will be high but when it goes towards flowering it will decrease and as it decreases mir172 will increase maima that's right very good so just remember this expression of mir156 is highest during du juvenile juvenile means young young stage age wise young stage juvenile stage and subsequently declines before transitioning to the flowering while the inverse is true for mir172 mir172 will be low during the juvenile phase and when it goes towards the flowering then it will have high increase neither that is correct very good so which definitely means if this is the juvenile phase then out of a and b one has to be mir156 out of c and d one has to be mir172 so this concept what is should be known to you means they are expecting okay now let's say a is uh, which means either one can be correct or two can be correct because here only it is saying a uh, is mir156 a is mir156 okay because b is all like that and b is over here okay this cannot be correct c because b is showing mir172 how can this be correct because already over here i um, yes so even uh, a can be correct sorry four can be correct because four is saying mir 156 so either one and four can be correct 
okay but th two and four two and three cannot be correct so out of this you have to decide b is spl genes or b is ap2 like genes now clearly you can see if mir156 is present it is inhibiting spl genes right it is inhibiting the spl genes so how can both of them be present at the same phase isn't it yes that's right debanjan yeah uh, my option 4 was hidden for some reason that's why i couldn't see it yes so mir156 and spl it is inhibiting spl gene so how can they be present at the same time not possible that is why this cannot be the answer okay so basically what happens is remember the ap2 like genes in a negative feedback loop ap2 directly represses the expression of mir172 and conversely reduction in spl levels spl levels through mir156 over expression delays the onset of flowering that means if spl is not there then flowering will be delayed which means spl is required for flowering because over c spl what was it doing it was activating mir172 which was required for flowering that is why 4 is the right answer very good everyone once you correct next question which topic will it be okay before that i want you all to remember that it's all on the belief isn't it mirror mirror on the wall i'll always get up after i fall if it is wrong no problem whether i run walk or have to crawl i'll set my goals and achieve them all okay everything is achievable with just a proper planning next topic okay drosophila comes back once again the following statement regarding the generation of dorsal ventral axis axis specification most uh, uh, most chosen topic of question in csir in drosophila was made gherkin protein moves along with the oocyte nucleus maternal deficiencies of either gherkin or torpedo cause ventralization gherkin is active only in oocyte and torpedo is active only in somatic cells pipe protein is made in dorsal follicle cell highest concentration of dorsal is in dorsal cell nuclei which becomes mesoderm so which of the following combination is true a and e c and d b and c b and e come on so you have to select the correct answers so should i give you an explanation and then will you try to solve it okay kritika vanshika deepa i have received answers from you okay good good all of you are trying fatima yashvin aditi okay no problem nida very good at least you have streamlined your answers okay anit good so see when it comes to this axis form uh, formation no this is the pathway that they follow right what pathway first of all this is your oocyte nucleus means this is the oocyte cell this blue color thing is the nucleus the top part where the nucleus is that side will go is going to form the future dorsal side the part which is away from the nucleus that side is going to form the future ventral side now clearly you can see this is the fate map shown 
the ventral side what is it developing it is developing mesoderm cells okay now how the signaling is done you can see the nucleus is with the dorsal part the nucleus is towards the dorsal side okay this part is zoomed and shown now which what are these cells near it near the oocyte surrounding the oocyte these cells are called as follicle cells and what are these cells they are nerve cells which will produce different molecules for the oocyte not going into that now here important is the oocyte and the surrounding follicle cells depending on what signal it will give to follicle cells okay the dorsal and the ventral fate will be decided dorsal means back side of the insect ventral means front side of the insect so basically over here that's right let's see then we will try to answer now nucleus is towards the dorsal side future dorsal hasn't formed dorsal yet where a type of mrna is released called as gherkin mrna if the gherkin mrna is released they will bind to some receptor now the receptor name on the follicle cells see these are follicle cells the receptor name on the follicle cells are called as torpedo torpedo receptor and gherkin is the signal torpedo is the receptor so where is the signaling happening at the dorsal side future when it receives the signal it will give a signaling effect the effect is pi protein will not be synthesized so pi protein if it is not synthesized then it ends up giving a dorsal fate i'll tell you why just remember that okay so at dorsal side there is no pi protein synthesis because of gherkin signaling if gherkin or torpedo is not there then dorsal cannot form it will go for ventral isn't it now what is happening at the ventral side ventral side there is nothing no gherkin even if torpedo receptor is there nothing to receive because nucleus is towards the future dorsal side so this side no gherkin no gherkin means pi protein will not be inhibited means here pi protein will be synthesized and if pi protein is synthesized remember i am not going into these entire signaling cascade towards the ventral side whatever small nucleus will appear later not now later when they will appear after fertilization this is before fertilization okay so what will happen towards the ventral side because of pi protein synthesis an entire cascade will degrade a molecule called as cactus if cactus is degraded this dorsal protein becomes free where does it become free at the ventral side all this is not happening at dorsal nothing is taking place at dorsal because pi protein is not there but at ventral dorsal is free and if it is free then what it will do it will enter the nucleuses so at the ventral side dorsal is high in concentration and it will enter the nucleus at the ventral side and give them all a ventral fate that's how it ends up in forming the mesoderm but at the dorsal side nothing is happening dorsal protein is not present dorsal is the name of a protein but ironically it is more on the ventral side there's a reason for that no i'm not going into detail okay so tell me now can you answer what will be the correct answer so few people had confusion now can you give me the correct answer or if you have given a wrong answer can you correct it now so this question was from june 2019 not far behind yes um mahima pipe synthesis will be there in ventral side correct as pipe synthesis is inhibited no gherkin and torpedo will uh, will stop the synthesis of pipe mahima okay dorsal does ventralization of dorsal side romi okay dorsal will do ventralization of dorsal side not ventral 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. You mean at the ventral side. Correct, correct. At the ventral side. Mutation in dorsal protein lead to ventralization. Nida Parveen, mutation in dorsal protein lead to dorsalization. That's right. Correct. Vishal, Nida, all of you are correct. Nandini, Fatima, Alia, Mahima, Anup, Sina, all of you are giving me correct answers. Okay. Again, I would like to point out the power of explanation, isn't it? Ankita, correct. So, we just saw Gherkin protein moves along the oocyte nucleus. Definitely, it goes towards the dorsal side and signals the follicle cells, but not to adopt ventral, to adopt dorsal fate. A cannot be wrong. A cannot be correct. So, these options, one option cannot be right. Maternal deficiency of either Gherkin or torpedo cause ventralization of the embryo. That's correct. If Gherkin is not there, then it will cause ventralization as happens on the ventral side. So, either 3 or 4 is correct. Gherkin is active only in the oocyte. That's right. The maternal Gherkin is important and torpedo you will find in the follicle cells. Yes, Sangeeta, Anup, Debanjan, all of you are right. Very good. So, C is correct. That's all. B and C, you have your answer. Pipe protein is made in the dorsal follicle cell. No, pipe protein is in, made in the ventral, fo ventral follicle cell towards the ventral side. Highest concentration of dorsal is in the dorsal cell nuclei, which becomes the mesoderm. Again, we saw that it is not correct because it is on the ventral cell nuclei. Highest concentration of dorsal and ventral. Tell me, easy or not? That's right. They will try to confuse us between dorsal protein and dorsal side. Very good, Devanjan. You have spotted the correct thing. Why this question might make you fall into a trap? about this axis formation right so explanation makes it easy for you to answer isn't it now i would like to remind you that these are the explanations so our lakshya batch it has just started as you know it's life science online coaching class it is a fresh batch where we have all these classes going on all the units for all the 13 units where you will have a proper channelized teaching and even revision classes will be there by all subject experts. You will also get a free copy of Conceptica flow book chart. How amazing is that? And you will definitely get unlimited chat assistant, doubt solving through chat, as many as questions as you want. Okay. Thank you so much, Anoop. Yes, thank you so much, Vishal. Alia, yes, that's what I said, right? You just need to know the proper channel. And the portal is a very important thing where you get, it's a one-stop uh, place for all your PPTs, what uh, Biotechnica uses in classes. All the recorded video lectures will be given to you, okay? So even if you miss class, that's okay. You can watch it later for some reason if you miss. And you'll not only get coaching, you will also get proper guidance. As we say, we don't teach at Biotechnica, we will be enlightening you. Okay, with knowledge. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, and you should hurry up because uh, we have some last few seats left. And uh, we have extended actually what was filled up. We have extended that and that might get filled up soon. So if you want, contact us. Otherwise, we'll have to uh, close it and we won't be able to accommodate. Okay, yes, Ankita, definitely explanation helps. Next question, again from Dosophila, but this time organogenesis. That was axis formation in early development. This is during the organ formation. Antinopedia complex in Drosophila. Homeotic gene. It is a homeotic gene. Contains five genes. All these. And they express in parasegments 1 to 5. There are segments and parasegments in entire Drosophila body. In a non-overlapping manner. Non-overlapping. They have already mentioned. That means they, they have their exclusive area of expression. Nothing is overlapping each other's expression. Now, in the larva or in later stage of development, the region of antinapedia expression corresponds to a part of second thoracic segment. So, uh, roughly a drosophila body has head, thorax and abdomen. Okay. So, that in thorax also there are three segments, T1, T2, T3. T2 is the second thoracic segment. A mutation in antinapedia is known to cause transformation of antenna to leg-like structures. So, there is a certain gene because of its mutation, you get leg-like structure instead of antenna. 
that's why it's called pedia antenna pedia means leg antenna instead of that leg develops so these are statements given with respect to functions of antenna pedia which combination correctly describes the function tell me which answer will be right yes most welcome debanjan okay saiba prompt answer read the answers options once this question is from june 2017 okay i'm getting answers from kaveri nida riya nagarjun good fast answers so i'll move on little bit fast now let me explain see these are the homeotic gene complexes in drosophila these are all responsible for forming all the parts that you see wing legs and antenna mouth whatever this entire is a complex which is the antenna pedia complex and this entire thing another complex which is bithorax complex so together these all will make the abdomens this homeotic genes magic is that how they are present in the gene sequence in the same way they will be expressed in the body so as you can see the last genes present in the gene sequence which is abd abdb abdominal b it is expressed in the last then abd a then ub x ultra by thorax then antenna pedia right now that's how this genes are causing a particular structure to form in this in the fly adult fly this particular segment if you ask who will produce that it will be produced by last of the genes it is determined by this gene so these are expression of each of these homeotic genes in non overlapping manner so clearly you can see there is no gradient formation it's a proper expression but here what does the question say answer say one of that antenna xpd expresses in thorax agreed it is expressed in thorax but it forms a concentration gradient no it has a fixed place of expression and that too in a complete form not gradient so thus affecting the head development no not at all this statement is wrong except c everything is correct yes so all of you have given me correct answer very good kaveri nida riya nagarjun saiba and ansari saiba was the first one uh, no kaveri was the first one to answer sorry yes vishal very good okay because see this is correct in the above described function antenna pedia mutation so there are two type of mutation remember gain of function and loss of function so gain of function will do what so here it was supposed to express in thorax right antenna pedia but along with that it will be also expressed in head that is gain of function that type of expression is called as ectopically it is ectopically expressed elsewhere isn't it so if it is ectopically expressed then what will happen it will show its effect in the head also what is this antenna pedia's effect in head it will repress the formation of antenna it will repress the genes which are causing antenna so that's why instead of antenna a leg will come out okay yes that's right very good saiba ectopic but what happens in this uh, if there is loss of mutation loss of mutation means in thorax also there won't be antenna pedia so will that have a effect of course it will have there will be no leg but in that case it will antenna will come out because antenna pedia is not there no leg in that case here only what was there that will continue which is ant- which is the antenna because nobody is there to repress antenna over here isn't it so that's why in the above described antenna pedia mutation the gene ectopically expresses in head region correct one of the function is to repress gene that induce antenna correct a homozygous recessive mutation this is loss of function expected to transform leg to antenna in the t2 segment second thoracic segment that's why the correct choice is abd okay that's what see this is a normal fly where uh, in the head region antennas are present but you can see a mutant fly where legs have come out right so not going through explanation already i have explained because normally it is most highly expect, expressed in second thoracic region 
were legs formed and not expressed in the head at all. But recessive loss of mutation will give the opposite phenotype. Antenna form in place of legs on the second thoracic segment. Okay. Yes, yes. These are only some um, mutational phenotypes. Correct. Okay, next. Mammalian development. Early mammalian development. Following statements were given about the pluripotency and the expression of some transcription factors. So, which out of these statements is true? Come on, tell me. ICM, inner cell mass, as you know in mammalian development, there is some group of cells which are present in the center. Those cluster of cells are called as ICM, inner cell mass, which are surrounded by some other cells which are called as outer layer cells called as trophoblast. Okay. So while ICM gives rise to proper embryo, the embryo embryonic parts, but trophoblast gives rise to the extra embryonic membranes like placenta and all. So what is the correct answer over here? This question is from December 2016. But uh, there, there is a recent question regarding this in November also if I remember. This, this also keeps on coming now these days. This uh, topic question. Okay. Many of you are giving me answers. So again, let me just explain you once. Then you can try solving it. Oct4, CDX2 expression, Nanog expression, GATA6 expression. Different, different transcription factor expressions are shown. This is the formation of the blastocyst which has inner cell mass and trophoblast. But... This is before that formation, before blastocyst formation in the initial time. Color code is given. Now you can see initially the OCT4 is present everywhere. See this brown color means in the nucleus means OCT4. Okay. So you can see in all the cells OCT4 is there. Similarly CDX2 also you can see almost in all cells you have a stochastic expression means random expression. Some cells it is there, some cells it is not there, but at least it is present in all cells, means all over, cells all over. But what will happen? CDX2 inhibits OCT4. So where CDX2 will be present, OCT4 cannot be present. Now where does CDX2 form? The apical domain activates CDX2, but inside environment inhibits CDX2. So automatically CDX2 is pushed towards outside. Inside environment, they cannot survive. So trophoblast cells, T means trophoectoderm, there will be expression of CDX2. But in inner cell mass, there will be expression of OCT4. Now, what is your first statement saying? The pluripotency of the inner cell mass is maintained by a core of three transcription factors. That's right. OCT4, SOX2, NANOG. Prior to blastocyst formation, each blastomere expresses both CDX2 and OCT4. Just now we saw, yes. And appears to be capable of becoming either ICM or trophoblast. Later the changes will happen. So A and B is right answer. Both ICM and trophoblast cells synthesize transcription factor CDX2. No, only ICM later ends up forming OCT4 and only trophoblast end up forming CDX. Absolutely not correct. OCT4 activates CDX2. No, OCT4 CDX2 will inhibit OCT4. So wherever CDX2 is present, OCT4 cannot be present. Enabling some cells to form trophoblast? No. So A and B is the right option. So yes, again, all of you who have answered, you are right. Anit, Amla, Deepa, Nupur, Nida, Nagarjun, Saiba, Aliya, Mahima, Nandini, Vishal. Very good, everyone. And Nanog and GATA6, they have stochastic expression. Means the cells in which Nanog will be there, see at the end, wherever Nanog is there, GATA6 is not there. Wherever GATA6 is there, Nanog is not there. So they also, CDX will also inhibit the Nanog. And wherever GRB2 is there, their GATA6 will be there, but Nanog cannot be there. So wherever cells will have GATA6, they will not have Nanog. This is what you have. 
again i am not going into detail for this one right next question regarding wingless and engrail this is anterior posterior compartment this is also the organogenesis part so we know there is a cascade of genes in drosophila as there will be maternal genes then zygotic gene comes gap genes then um, pair rule genes and last will be segmentation genes which will cause the segments of the body actually which will already segments were there but segment polarity will be given polarity which side is anterior which side is posterior that polarity will be given okay so following statements are given towards explaining their regulation so which of the following has all the correct statements towards the regulation of anterior posterior compartment of segments tell me so any of you if you are feeling that yes uh, by explanation things are becoming easy for me to understand definitely don't give up on your dreams for achieving csir exam okay even if you miss this one but you can start preparing right away as you know the laksha batch is just started all i want is you should not waste time you should take a decision today whether you want to clear csir or not that's all you have to decide okay that's all you have to decide and jump into your preparation as early as possible so that you don't miss out any introduction introductory classes right because all these concepts in, from all the units you are attending all the classes right uh, all these webinars so all these concepts are going to be discussed in class okay no problem alia i'll discuss okay i can see people answering saiba vishal nagarjun nida come on others also try okay anit so basically in the segments what you have in drosophila so this is the entire drosophila embryo there are some segments para segments right which are zoomed these cells only this uh, cells what is there in the segments these are zoomed and shown to you so this is a bigger picture of that now see there is a cell over here in one um, segment this is one entire segment okay this is one entire segment so in one entire segment you can see at the last of the segment two cells they are expressing a molecule called as engrailed and the cell which is dust before that it is expressing wingless okay and those two cells are shown over here the wingless expressing expressing cell and the engrailed expressing cell now you can see the wingless it is releasing a wingless protein wingless expressing cell and that wingless expressing protein that wingless is going to all the nearby cells it is going to all nearby cells okay but the cell which is closest this side it is receiving the wingless the receptor for wnt is frizzled which activates disheveled disheveled inhibits gsk3 which in this case name is zw3 gsk3 will activate uh, beta catenin means if gsk3 is inhibited then it activates beta catenin beta catenin uh, analog for drosophila is armadillo it enters the nucleus of engrailed expressing cell don't forget this is engrailed expressing cell where it is expressing engrailed and hedgehog secretory molecule now you can see hedgehog is releasing but in a shorter range not in a longer range in a shorter range and then they are going and binding to the cell immediately next to it hedgehog receptor is patched which activates the c glee component cubitus interruptus don't forget this is the wingless expressing cell this was engrailed expressing cell so cubitus interruptus is expressed in wingless expressing cell that goes into the nucleus makes wingless and again the cycle continues so that is how they are maintaining the polarity so what is it saying wingless is a secretory factor yes it is it is released in the nearby cells engrailed is a secretory factor no engrailed is expressed in the cell hedgehog is released and it forms a long range concentration no it forms a short range concentration it doesn't form concentration it is just released in the shorter range so b is not correct 
Engrel regulates wingless through hedgehog. Again, correct. It was releasing hedgehog, which forms a short range concentration gradient. Beta catenin homolog is the signaling molecule upstream of Engrel. Correct. Because beta catenin armadillo, beta catenin homolog is armadillo. That was activating the formation of Engrel, which gets cleaved by GSK3 homolog, which was ZW3 in this case. So D is also correct. Cubitus interruptus is an intracellular signaling molecule in the engrail expressing cell. No, no, in the wingless expressing cell. So this is wrong. Correct answer, A, C and D. Very good, everyone. Yeah, Yashvin, uh, Yashvin Jakka, Mahima, Debanja, Nandini, Kaveri, Aditi, Sangeeta, Anit, Nida, Vishal, Nagarjun and Saiva gave the first correct answer. Very good, everyone. Alia, clear to you. So segment and para segment, Anit. Just before parasegment basically means taking the posterior part of the previous segment and the anterior part of the next segment. That is what is a parasegment. Okay. Next question. Second last question. Come on. You have to get it correct. Cam signaling plays an important role in the development and differentiation. Oh, dictyostelium, discoidium. Another favorite topic. This morphogen is by different, uh, synthesized by different adenyl cyclases expressed at different stage of life cycle. Following statements refer to the effect of mutations. So which out of this is correct? PNS, P only, PNQ, RNS. So previous question was from G December 2019. And uh, even this is from December 2019. So, this adenylate cyclases, three of them are there in Dicryostelium discoidium. I hope you will know that it is unicellular in initially, but later they will culminate together to form a multicellular organism. So, initially they are in the form of a slug and later they will form a fruiting body and that fruiting body they will have some stalk and there will be a spore from which again individual organisms will come. Now, this spore formation is one thing and spore maturation and germination is another thing. So, ACA, ACB, ACG, when they are developed, what their function is, based on them, this is the question. Okay. No, this is not, uh, no, not botany really. Because this particular organism has characteristic of both plant and animal development. Okay. Okay, no problem, Nida. I haven't studied this topic. So let's check. So this is the Dictyostelium discoidium. Okay. See, the, these things what happens, you know, when we study a unit, we think we are prepared, but we will miss out some topics. Now, what if among your unit C questions, this is one of a question. So your chances got reduced even if you have studied unit 5, right? So we should not selective study in a unit if you are selecting one unit. Yeah, the, uh, skip is fine. My point is a different point that, you know, we should study all the topics from a particular unit, but it's not possible to study everything. Right? So that's where the classes help. That's what my point is. But try not to leave the topic. Now differentiation phase this fruiting body. Some molecules are involved in this part. So yes, answer is option one. Because ACB, ACB is a transcription, it's a adenylate cyclase. It is responsible for increase in adenylate cyclase activity, which occurs after aggregation. That single organisms, when they will come together, this ACA will be required. In accordance with this, ACB minus cells show normal development until the slug stage, but it will show abnormal fruiting body with long stalks and un unstable spores are formed. Now, ACG, remember, ACG is required for germination. 
ACB is required for spore formation. ACG is required for germination. It is expressed after the fruiting body has formed during germination. So obviously if cells does not have ACG, what will happen? Even though they form normal fruiting body, while they will form normal fruiting body, because ACB is there, no. So spore formation will be there. That will harbor viable spore. But because ACG is not there, germination will be a problem. So it will display abnormality in the germination process. In wild type cells, heat shock stimulated germination occurs synchronously at low osmolarity and is inhibited with presence of high osmolarity. Now in contrast, pores from ACG minus cells. Okay, like wild type means what? If you provide heat shock stimulated germination, then at low osmolarity it will happen. But high osmolarity, it will be inhibited. But ACG minus cells can even germinate spontaneously even in high concentration because ACG cannot sense the condition for germination. Okay. So dormant spores have high CMP just before it has been established that high spore. So with this only you should be able to solve. And yes, initially the aggregation happens because of CAMP signaling. So CAMP signaling, it gives pulses to ACA minus cells means CAM signal, it causes the cells to come together. Now, if you have ACA minus, ACA is required for the initial aggregation of the dictyostelium cells together. That happens when nutrient is not there. Now, if any cell is ACA minus, but somehow you are providing CAM pulses, then it is solving the purpose. No, ultimately ACA was supposed to give CAM signaling. So, ACA is not there, but you are giving CAM signaling. Then normal gene expression development will proceed. So what it is saying over here in this question, AC, ACA deficient cells can be allowed to aggregate by exposing them to pulses of CAMP. Correct. ACB deficient cells would form normal fruiting body. This is correct. And the spores can germinate when exposed to favorable conditions. No, because uh, no, actually normal fruiting body won't be formed because ACB is supposed to be responsible for formation of spore. But ACB is deficient means this is not correct. ACG deficient cells develop normally. That's okay. And spores germinate in the spore head itself. No, germination will be affected if there is ACG deficient. So R and Q is not correct. Spores form, uh, form the ACG will germinate irrespective of the osmotic condition. It's just not sensing the osmotic conditions. That is why one is correct. Clear everyone? Okay, the last question is from sea urchin development. Now, this is an easy question. Everyone has to get it correct. DSH, where it is expressed, vegetal cortex or cytosol. Treatment of embryo with lithium chloride. Treatment of embryo, uh, beta catenin prevented from entering nucleus. All of these experiments, what they lead to? Which of the following represents a combination of correct statements? So what will be the correct answer? From June Okay, many of you have given me answers. Yes. So DSH, disheveled, it is responsible for the dorsal side specification in sea urchin. Initially, they are present at the vegetal cortex. But because of cortical rotation, they come over here. So that's why beta catenin is expressed only in the dorsal side. So it's not present all over cytosol. No, it is expressed only in vegetal cortex. A is correct. Beta catenin accumulates predominantly in micromeres. So beta catenin will start expressing, uh, sorry, uh, the disheveled will be present over here in micromeres. So that is why beta catenin will also be present in 
in this micromeres okay this is responsible for the um, development of the vegetal pole cells so beta catenin accumulates in the micromeres and to some extent in the top tier that is veg2 cells now if you don't allow if you treat with lithium chloride then beta catenin will be expressed in all cells so if beta catenin expressed in all cells means all cells will give vegetal type of specification no one will give animal as such only the animal part was supposed to be means only the top part was supposed to give animal where beta cat is not present but if you treat with lithium chloride beta cat is expressed everywhere so entire thing becomes vegetalized cell and vegetal cells give rise to endoderm and mesoderm so they become specified as endoderm and mesoderm but this part is not correct it is saying it does not allow the accumulation of beta cat it's the other way around lithium chloride allows the accumulation of beta cat in nuclei of all blastula cells that is why d is not correct correct answer is a c and e third answer when beta cat is prevented from entering nucleus beta cat is required for vegetalization endoderm and mesoderm formation but if it is not allowed to enter nucleus only it's supposed to give transcription factor activation how it can give the signal so entire thing forms a ectodermal ball so yes saiba very good first correct answer vishal alia shubha mahima nandini raumi aditi deepa very good everyone so with that i end the class i hope it was beneficial for you thank you everyone keep studying and please let us know whether biotechnica classes regular or webinars are helping you in your preparation or not thank you everyone good night